This is the OnePlus 10 Pro disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so I'll be notified when I upload a new video. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, we need to apply heat to the back plate using a hairdryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath. And then we're going to use our plastic pry tool to pry the back plate off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and prying them off. Aside from the adhesive on the back, there is some foam padding in the center. There are 20 Phillips screws that need to be removed. Once the screws are removed, the red rubber gasket with metal cover can be lifted up and removed. And then the flex cable can be disconnected. Now the graphite film can be peeled off from the bottom speaker assembly. And then the top plastic cover can be removed. There's a large area of graphite film which helps transfer heat and the wireless charging coil is located towards the center of the back of the phone. This is the flex cable for the dual LED flash as well as the back ambient light sensor. And there are multiple antenna lines which are these light gray color lines drawn on the plastic. This flex cable here is the NFC antenna. Taking a look at the other side, here are the two contacts for the NFC cable, and here's the contact for the wireless charging coil. Now that we have access to the battery cable, we're going to disconnect that first. Once the battery cable is disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There's a white and black coaxial cable which need to be disconnected from the main board. The graphite film and copper tape covering the connector for the front facing camera needs to be peeled back so we can disconnect and remove it. Here's a better look at the 32 megapixel front facing camera. There's also a plastic cover covering one of the flex cables that needs to be peeled off and removed. Now we have access to disconnecting that flex cable. Now we can disconnect and remove the 48 megapixel main camera, the 8 megapixel telephoto camera, and the 50 megapixel ultra wide camera. The main camera and telephoto lens both have OIS, which is optical image stabilization. There are two Phillips screws holding the main board down that need to be removed. Now the main board can be lifted up and removed. Taking a closer look at the motherboard, there's a secondary microphone located on the top corner, graphite film and copper tape on the front shields, as well as rubber gaskets around these connectors. And this board is also a multi-layer board design. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see a thermal pad on this chip and this one on the bottom. On the back side, there's a proximity sensor located on top, and more graphite film and copper tape on the back shields, as well as thermal paste. Once the copper tape is peeled back, we can see thermal pads on these chips over here, as well as thermal paste on the RAM and processor, and these chips. Here's a better look with the thermal pads removed and the thermal paste cleaned off. The LPDDR5 RAM is seated on top of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 processor. Next to it is the UFS 3.1 ROM, or onboard storage. Now the speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. Here's a look at the speaker assembly. Here's the speaker itself, and it has the white foam balls underneath that black tape. There are three flex cables on the subboard which need to be disconnected as well as the white coaxial cable. There's a single Phillips screw holding the subboard down that needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be removed. The primary microphone is located in the center, and there's a rubber gasket around this connector. The SIM reader is located on the back. 
Once that subboard is removed, we have access to the screen cable, which is located on the bottom right corner. So if you needed to replace your screen, you'd need to remove the back plate, as well as the bottom screws and speaker assembly. And then you need to disconnect the cables on the subboard and remove the subboard itself, giving you access to the screen cable, at which point you would heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry your old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply your new screen, making sure you run the flex cable back through the opening in the midframe, and reassemble your phone. To remove the battery, there are pull tabs on either side to help you pry the battery off. Here's a better look at the dual cell battery. Each cell has 2500 milliamp hour of capacity. They're both connected together with one flex cable. To remove the charger port, we need to peel off the battery adhesive pouch. There's also foam padding which needs to be peeled off. Once the adhesive pouch is pulled back, we can clearly see the flex cable for the charger port as well as the flex cable which connects the main board to the subboard and the extension flex cable which connects the screen to the main board. And that one's routed underneath this flex cable. Here's a better look at the charger port, and there's a red rubber gasket around it. Once the foam padding is peeled off, we can see the linear vibrator motor, and that's held on with adhesive. So if you need to replace that, you just apply some heat and gently pry it off. The flex cable for the fingerprint reader is also routed through an opening in the midframe, right by the vibrator motor. There's also this flex cable and coaxial cable which connect to this antenna board on the corner. And there's a red rubber gasket with mesh filter on the bottom speaker opening on the frame. Once these flex cables are peeled back, we have a better look at the vapor chamber, which is seated underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. If you need to replace the flex cable for the power button, there's a protective tape you need to peel back, as well as remove the coaxial cable, which would then give you access to this plastic bracket on the side, which you'd have to pull up and pull out of the frame. At that point, you'd be able to peel off the flex cable and remove the power button. The same goes for the volume keys on the other side. The earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 6 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply new adhesive and reapply your back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next one.